Arena Commander, the dogfighting module, was released to much fanfare after PAX Australia in 2014. For the first time, backers could play the game that they had been supporting for two years. It was fun and exciting to be able to fly and fight your ship against AI opponents at first, and later on, other players. As time went on, the focus of the development team moved to the expanding Persistent Universe and away from Arena Commander, and for many different reasons, players lost interest. But there is a niche that Arena Commander can still fill. Flying aircraft is an expensive and dangerous business, especially for combat pilots where their lives are on the line. To keep costs down and pilots skill up, the use of simulation has become the new standard for private, commercial and military pilot training alike. Simulators allow for practicing procedures for dangerous events and emergencies without any of the associated risk that would come from putting an aircraft into those situations. The pilot can become practiced and confident in what to do in a bad situation before ever leaving the ground. Pilots have to practice operating their aircraft effectively through all phases of flight, takeoff, climb, descent, stalls and landing. Because the aircraft and simulator fly in the exact same way, pilots can memorize procedures and build up their muscle memory without ever setting foot inside a real aircraft. In a simulator, pilots can fly anywhere around the virtual globe, letting crews practice takeoffs, flight and landing around unfamiliar areas and unfamiliar airfields quickly and cheaply before attempting the real thing. Military simulators are used by aircrew to trial and hone combat tactics and even fight against real pilots from allied forces all over the world, sharing and sharpening their skills without having to leave their home base. Because current simulator technology has progressed so far, the latest military fighters like the F-35 are manufactured without a two-seater variant and all initial conversion flight training is completed in the sim. By using simulators instead of aircraft for training, the risk to pilots and the aircraft is totally eliminated, reducing the cost of training significantly as the operator doesn't need to pay for maintaining the aircraft, fueling or insurance etc. The risks and costs involved with flight in the real world translate into Star Citizen 2. When you take your ship out for a training run to come to grips with how it flies, what to do in an emergency situation or how it fights in the PU, you risk at least the cost of the fuel used and at worst your avatar's virtual life. The best way to practice flying and fighting in your new ship is to fly in a simulator instead. In Star Citizen, this niche is filled by Arena Commander. Arena Commander allows pilots to train for high risk situations like combat with no chance of losing anything apart from some time waiting to respawn and perhaps a little pride. This lets them hone their skills, tactics and procedures. In the final game, it is my hope that the simulator pod is standard fit to many of the space stations and even larger ships to allow pilots to train in a no-risk environment. Arena Commander has not seen any real development since its initial introduction in the dogfighting module in 2014. This has left the game mode stale and in dire need of revamp and improving. Many backers have suggested new ideas for modes, new maps and improvements to make Arena Commander more relevant to training for situations in the PU. Larger maps with objective-based missions could provide compelling gameplay where two teams battle it out for supremacy. A suggestion I have is a capture the station game mode, which could play like a king of the hill. Two teams must fight to capture a station at the centre of the map by taking control of the station's control room. The control room would be situated at the top of the station with landing pads situated around the bottom. Ground troops would need to board the station and fight their way to the top before accessing and holding the control room for a period of time. This could involve hacking multiple terminals, for example. This would require the use of combined arms with dropships, fighters and bombers. The fighters must keep control of the battle space and escort the dropships to ensure the troops inside arrive safely. Bombers could be used to suppress the enemy's defending turrets and larger ships. The map must be large enough to allow for multi-crew ships and allow fighters to withdraw to their spawn location to rearm and repair. All smaller ships would spawn upon a carrier ship, which is stationary. Ships can only repair and rearm on their home ship. Bombers could be used to attempt to destroy the opponent's carrier. To win a match, the teams must either capture the station, destroy the opposing carrier, or run the opposing team out of tickets. New modes similar to this one would give some actual PU training value by introducing combined arms and multiple ship combat. Simulating situations similar to what you might expect in PU for training would make you and your org more ready for combat when it matters. Good hunting pilots.